Installing the cables on the stair railings is the most difficult part of this whole installation. And I added some, originally there was just one main post down there and a post up here, and then it had a bunch of vertical pieces here. And for the cables, I went, I went ahead and added two more posts. So since the original handrail touched off up here, like that, I was able to use the original handrail to measure and cut these angles and set up these posts properly. So the handrail touches up here, right at the top of the post. The, the distance this hole is from the top of the post is the same distance I want this hole to be, so that the cable is parallel to the handrail. So that distance is four and a half inches. So I can use that distance to make a mark on this post at four and a half inches for the entrance for the first hole of the cable, and then make a mark for every three inches down, which is the spacing I want for the cables. Now, three inches at an at a angle is gonna look a little bit spaced a little bit closer together than the rest of the deck. But I can't really adjust the spacing because it would look funny like if I when I transition from three inches here to three inches down here, it just wouldn't look right, especially because because the other because the other side I had to transition from coming straight through the post to the angle. So I'm just gonna leave it at three inches. It's gonna look a little bit more compact than uh, at the than at the top, which is which is fine. To get the angles correct, I made this alignment jig, just using a piece of plywood, thin plywood, and a T-square bevel square. Oh, this angle right here is approximately 35 degrees relative to horizontal. I first of all used set it up here, and then used just aligned it with the top of the handrail here to set my angle for this piece of wood and then clamped it to the bevel square and then I can slide down and make marks at different heights and make a mark at the angle for the cable where this is the entrance from above and this is going to be the exit down below. So I already have the marks for the entrance from above on this side here. I've already marked those at three inch, three inch intervals. So then all I have to do is line that up and make a mark here. So here I've already made several marks. Then I'm gonna go down here to the next one and mark that one slide down, just making sure that I'm keeping the square with the, this edge up against the post. These really help adjust your angle as you're drilling. And also, after I've marked them all, I can take the square and go on this side and mark a a horizontal line across here that marks the and mark the center of the hole to drill from below. So I can drill you can drill from above, you can drill from below. I have mine I just found it easier easier to drill from below, especially down here. I can't really access it from above, so I have to go from below down here. So here you can see how you take this angled mark, termination there, and then mark your center line for drilling in the post here. When you get too low, you gotta flip the square over.
So now we're gonna use this giant drill bit and drill through here. One of the nice things about this big drill bit is you can kind of, you can, it allows you to see better the direction you're drilling and if you're in alignment. So it actually makes it easier to make a straight hole in my opinion. And then this hole down here, I couldn't reach it with uh, that thing, so we're just gonna have to do this man manually. And with this long drill bit, so I started off straight just to get it aligned, then kind of get it angled, turning it. Then with this long drill bit, it's pretty easy to make sure you're straight, you know, you got to be straight in two directions, you gotta be straight vertically and horizontally. So now I can use a straight edge and I can kind of line up the drill bit. And once lined up, then you can just keep going the same direction. This one's a really tough one. The slowest one I was able to drill from the top, from above, and kind of bending the drill bit a little bit and get it to come out the bottom where I wanted to come out there. So that one's tough to do. These are the wood protector ferrules, um, bushings that you can put into the wood posts to make the holes look nicer. And some, you could use this on every single hole but it would end up costing a lot of money. Um, but they look really nice. They're really well made, stainless. They look, they look pretty. Uh, nice chamfers on there. If you want to make your setup look really good, then this is the way to do it. But um, I'm only using it for places where I need the hole to be very strong. Like at the top of the steps, when the cable goes down the steps, cable goes at an angle, or anywhere else you would have an angle. Like if you had a corner, if you had some corner posts and you're, the cable is coming out of an angle, then you could use these too. If you wanted to, you could add these to all the holes in your posts, but honestly, like it's a lot of money. These are pretty expensive. So I'm only using them here where I need the strength of the bushing to keep the cable from digging down. Running the cable up the staircases is similar to the rest of the deck with a few small differences. One being that at the top, there's some ferrules that I put to go through the transition from horizontal to angled so that it doesn't dig into the wood. And second, at the bottom, we're gonna add these um, angled washers. So. The only ones I could find that were closest my, to this angle of the, of the steps here, which is 35 degrees, was 30 degrees, which is close enough. Once I install it, it looks close enough. So what I do is I take the cable and I feed it through these posts here. All the way to the top. And then when I get to the top, I add the swage ball that goes on the end. So take the swage ball in, put the washer on, put it on the end of the cable, put it in here and just hold it in place and loosely clamp. Then you can hold the cable, all bottom, bottom out the cable all the way down. Then you can start the crimp. And I like to be able to rotate the head because the cable's kind of coming down at an angle. So it keeps the, the cable nice and straight there. Then we're gonna rotate it and do another crimp at 90 degrees.
then pull the cable through here. Got a little bit of a twist there. And I have these other cables which I haven't crimped the ends on yet. But on the posts, I've marked the, the length of the cable where I need to cut it. So it just makes it easy. I just put it next to the post and mark the cable based on the mark at the end, the mark that I've already made on the post. And then cut it. <clears throat> and then I repeat this doing swaging only at the top for right now. And then once all the cables are in, then I come to the bottom and swage the screw on parts of the bottom. And the reason I'm doing that is because otherwise I have to carry the swaging tool back and forth all the time. And it's just, a, it's less efficient. It'd be nice to have a swaging tool up there and a swaging tool down here. Here, when you're at the bottom, then I rotate the head in the other direction. The cable coming down is a little bit, a little bit straighter like this. Then I can put the, the end piece in here, just loosely clamp it in place, and slide the cable in here, and hold it while I crimp it. Rotate it 90 degrees, give about three millimeters of space next to the other crimp, like that, and then crimp again. And now pass it through the post. So here's the other main difference with the steps is that we're gonna be using these angled washers and these are 30 degree angles. You can get them at a few different angles, like 30, 45, although it seems like the majority of them are at 30 degrees, which is like most steps. However, I mentioned my steps would be 35 degrees, but really it does, didn't make too much of a difference. It, they fit okay. Especially once I start to tighten them down, they're gonna dig into the wood anyways, and you won't see that they're, they're not 35 degrees. You won't see that five degree difference. So the way these work, you take this angled washer, you put it on here, and put the nut on the end. <clears throat> 